Hello class, I'm going to do a recording now for Math 410 for Chapter 12, Section 2. It's called Power Rules for Exponents. So I'm going to share my camera with you. All right, so we're going to work on this section 12.2 power rules for exponents. And there, there are four power rules I want to talk about. There's three on this page listed. And then the fourth one, I think I'll add to the bottom of this page. And actually, it's kind of related to this idea anyhow. So I'm going to add a fourth rule to this page. So I start with the first one on page 230. It says uh, power rules for exponents. And it says if A is a non-zero row number and M and N are integers, then we have in parenthesis A to the M, close parenthesis, raised to the n power is equal to a m times n. So notice here what they do is they multiply the inside exponent with the outside exponent. So in other words, the value of a power raised to a power can be found by multiplying the exponents and keeping the base. Okay, so if I look through uh, our exercises, to see which ones demonstrate that and go through and look at that and see. I would say on page 235, number one, and on page 236, number four, for starters. So it says, simplify the expression using the properties of exponents. Expand any numerical portion of your answer and only include positive exponents. So see here, we're going to multiply three times four. So here we're using what they call the power rule. For exponents. So here we would have y3 times 4, which is y to the 12 power. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the idea for this power rule for exponents. Uh, the other one is on the next page, uh, number 4. This number four, three in parentheses n to the negative three times three. For that one, we'll start off using the power rule. For exponents, so we'll start off with um, that scalar of three. Let's call a multiplier. is called a scalar. It's also a fancy word for multiplier. And then your n, you have negative three 
times three. So I'm gonna put these little arrows here. You're multiplying those exponents, the inside exponent with the outside exponent. And so you have that scalar, that multiplier, and then on the end, negative three times three is negative nine. Okay, now we're gonna use the rule for negative exponents. So what happens is um, right here, this n to negative nine, we're gonna have to uh, relocate the base n, and we're gonna have to remove the negative on the exponent. So uh, the three will stay where it's at, but that that n, that n's gonna be relocated. Right now they're in the numerator, the three and the n are in the numerator. There's like an imaginary one in the denominator. So now that n is going to go to the bottom in the denominator, and you're going to take off the negative, and you're going to have n to the 9, okay? And that's going to be your answer right there, okay? All right, so those are those are a uh, couple examples that use that rule, the power rule for uh, exponents. Okay. All right, so now let me go back to the the rules two thirty. And then let's go to another rule. So if you're still writing, you can pause it. You can pause it if you're still writing. Otherwise, it continue. And now let's go to an, another rule. This is called the rule for power of a product. If A and B are uh, non-zero real numbers, and n is an integer, then they have this, that parenthesis, a to the first power, and then uh, b to the first power, close parenthesis, and then raise to the n power, okay? That equals to a, and then you have one times n, so I'm gonna draw these lines, these arrows. And then on the B, you also have one times N. So one times N is N. And then on the B, one times N is N. We have that there. So in words, a power of a product. So the power of a product, and these are products, right? A times B is found by raising each factor, okay, so that would be like the A and the B, each factor, to that power. Okay, so, you know, they're all being raised to the N power, right? One times n 
one times n and then this one one times n okay so in your book i think uh there's one that has just expressing that would be i would say number seven on page 233 number seven on page 233 so again if you're still writing you can uh, pause the video Okay, then turn it back on. Okay, but I'm going to go to number seven. Okay, remember I have a I have a teacher's edition, so that's these are like answers. Those are answers. So I'm going to show you. They don't have the word; they just have the answer. So I'm going to show you how they how they work that. Okay. So again, this is page. Two thirty-three. Okay, so we're going to use um, the rule for uh, power of a product. Okay, so um, so I have that negative two. That's like you know a scalar, a multiplier. So that just sits there in the front, parentheses, and then what I'm going to do on this three is I'm going to uh, put uh, an imaginary one on that three, okay, you know, three to the first power, x to the fifth power, y to the negative two power. And then um, I'm going to multiply the inside exponent with the outside exponent. So I'm going to do one times negative three. And then on the x, I'm going to do five times negative three and then on the y i'm going to do negative two times negative three okay so that we're raising each factor to that power so we're raising this factor Three, this factor x, this factor y, to you know that power of negative three. So we got to multiply each one. Okay. So then this gives us negative two parentheses, and then one times negative three is negative three. And on the x, five times negative three is negative fifteen. And y, negative two times negative three is six. Okay. And then now we're going to use the rule for negative exponents, which basically says, um, basically it says, um, relocating relocate and remove the negative on the exponent right 
So that's what that's what that rule is. The rule for negative exponents, that's what you're doing. You're relocating and you're removing the negative on the exponent. So then, so then we have that this is equal to um, the negative two is fine where it's at, but this um, three to the negative third has to get relocated and this X to the negative 15 has to get relocated. So the three goes to the bottom and you remove the little negative on that exponent. And then the X goes to the bottom and then you remove the little negative on that exponent. And then the Y to the six is, you know, fine where it's at stays there in the numerator, doesn't have a negative exponent, so it stays there. Okay. And then you want to use your calculator on three cubed. So three, and then you use this key, right, to raise it to the third power is equal to 27. So now you have this equals negative two y to the six all over and that becomes 27 x to the 15. Okay, and that, that would be your final answer for that problem. Okay. Okay, and then I think I think I want to do number six while we're at it. Let me do number six while we're at it on the previous page. Okay, here's number six. This is on page 232. So remember, remember any number or variable except zero raised to zero power equals one. Remember that rule? That's called that was from section uh, that was from section 12.1. So if I go to 12.1 rules. That was called the exponent zero rule. Any number except zero and any variable raised to zero power equals one. That was called the exponent rule. So here we're going to use that exponent rule. And so we have negative three and that just becomes one. So this, this is just one. Any, any number raised to the zero power is just one. So this is negative, remember this is a scalar a multiplier, a scalar and negative three times one is just negative three. And then while we're at it, we can we can do this one while we're at it here. Here, do you see you would just multiply, right? Those two exponents. So this would be two. And then you have negative three times negative two. And then negative three times negative two is positive six. And then you just use your calculator on that. And it should give you, see, it should give you 64. When you use your calculator, you're using this key, right? Okay. 
right. So two and then your your hat key. So two and your hat key and then six sixty four. Okay, see that? If you have an older calculator, you might have one of these other keys. These, some of the older calculators have these keys. Nobody's calculator has all three of these keys, but these are the keys that activate the exponent. So if you have a scientific calculator, you should have one of these keys. And the TI-30 XS, you know, uses this key, okay? Otherwise, if you don't, then you'd have to manually, if you don't, you'll have to manually do it six times, two times, two times, two times, two times, two times, two, one more, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So if you don't have that key, you'll have to actually count, keep track of that. It's good when you have a screen because the screen helps you keep track of that, okay? Or, or you just, do it manually, two times two is four, and then times two is eight, and keep track of it manually to get to that six, one, two, raised to the sixth power. Okay. Let's go continue with our rules, let's see. So I'm on page 230. And remember when we take our tests, our test for, you can always use the first sheet of, of your lesson because that's where all your rules are out. So you can always have those out. Okay, next we have the rule for power of a quotient. If A and B are non-zero real numbers and N is an integer, then we have that um, A to the M over a to the n is equal to a raised to the m take away n, okay? So notice the order is you wanna, you wanna do um, the top exponent, which is m, minus the bottom exponent, which is, which is um, n, which is n, okay? So in words, a power of a quotient in fraction form. So you see this is a power of a quotient And your book, let's see. I think, let's see, I think I might have, I think I might have used the wrong reference. Let me see. Let's see. I'm sorry, I might have used the wrong reference. That, that I think I was looking at something from 12.1. Let me see, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was looking at the wrong notes for 12.1. Let me back up, sorry. Let me back up. So this we've seen before. We saw this before. Um, we saw this before already in 12.1, because I remember I took the sheet out right now as a reference to look back. 
So sorry, let me see. I'm so sorry, let me see to make back. I don't know if you'll recognize that or not, but I had taken that out earlier to reference it. And so it looked almost identical. Slightly different though. Sorry about that. Okay, so it should say rule for power of a quotient. It should say that a to the first power over b to the first power in parentheses raised to the n power. So we should multiply right here. Multiply these. So we have a one times n and on the bottom b one times n. And so one times n is n. And the bottom one times n is n. So we have that equal to a to the n over b to the n. In words, a power of a quotient in fraction form. So a power, a power of a quotient, right? And quotient in fraction form is found by raising both the numerator. And the denominator to that power. So we're raising both the numerator and the denominator to that power. So don't forget, sometimes people forget about the bottom. They, they do the top, but sometimes human nature, human error, they forget about the bottom. They don't do fully the bottom. So just be careful with the bottom part, okay? Okay, so now if I look for examples of that. Let's see. I guess let's go back to page 235. So I think I think now the remaining the remaining problems that are left, the remaining problems that are left now um, covered these rules, I believe. So if you look at number two, look at number two, you're going to want to multiply the inside exponent with the outside exponent. And I'm also gonna put a one here I'm going to multiply the inside exponent with the outside exponent. And what I'm using, I'm using the rule for power of a 
quotient. Okay, we're using the rule for a for power of a quotient. So we have y two times six, and then we have x one times six. So two times six is 12. And on the x, one times six is six, okay? So we have y to the 12 over x to the six, okay? And then if we, if we um, step that up a notch, if you look at number three, see, stepping that up a notch, we're going to multiply one, negative one times four and three times four. So we are using the rule for power of a quotient, so we are using that. So we have x negative one times four, y three times four. And on the bottom, this three, there's a little imaginary one there, but we're doing one times four. So on the three, one times four, and then on that x, on that x, you're doing two times four. And then on the y, we're doing negative three times four. Okay. So, so that's what I mean by stepping it up a notch, right? We're doing all that multiplication. So on the x, you have negative one times four is negative four. On the y, three times four is 12. On the bottom for that three, you have one times four is four. On the x, two times four is eight. And on the y, negative three times four is a negative 12, okay? Okay, and then, of course, uh, we're going to use the calculator, right, on the three to the fourth, which I think three to the fourth is at 81. So in a little bit, we're gonna, we're gonna do that. We do a couple things at the same time. So we have three raised to the fourth power, yep is 81, okay? So I'm gonna just keep track of that. In a little bit, we're gonna change that. But then I'm also going to use, um, let me highlight these, see these right here? Those need to be relocated and uh, remove the negative. So if I go back to 12.1, where we do that, that's that's using the rule for negative exponents. This is in 12.1, rule for negative exponents. So it says that we relocate negative exponents in answers. If, if the negative exponent is in the numerator, like this one, then we relocate it to the denominator and you remove the little negative on the exponent. And then, and then this paragraph can be rewritten when you interchange these. If the negative exponent is in the denominator like this one, then you relocate it to the numerator to the top and then you remove the little negative on the exponent. So we're now using the rule for negative 
the exponents. So we basically locate and um, we relocate and we basically remove the negative on the exponent. So you relocate, relocate, and then you remove the 